I wouldn't have guessed that a year into its release, the MIUI Mini has yet another custom firmware release. We now have Onion OS, Mini UI, and now Kuriki, made by the R Paradise team. Kuriki is a simple menu front end with a RetroArch emulation system. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install it, run through the features and themes, and then do a brief likes and dislikes in comparison with Onion OS. Installation is actually super simple. Firstly, a warning. This has only been tested on firmware version 2022.04.19. So if you're running an older version of the firmware that's loaded on the device, please look at upgrading that at the link below in the description. Okay, let's get into installing Kuriki. So download it from the link in the description below, then unzip the file. I recommend at least a 64 gigabyte card, but for the demo, I'm using a 32 bit gigabyte card. Then you can use an SD card reader like this or an SD adapter like this one and plug it into your computer. If you don't have a blank card, you can format it. On Windows, you can simply go to your file browser, right click on the drive, make sure that you selected the correct drive because you will lose all your files here, then select format. Make sure your file system is set to FAT32, delete any text in the volume label text bar, unselect quick format, Make sure once again you have selected the correct drive and then select start. Okay, now our format is complete, let's move on. Now open the Kariki folder and copy the contents over to your blank, unlabeled FAT32 SD card. Then add your BIOS files here. The Neo Geo BIOS file must be placed here. Drag your ROMs over like this. There's a place on their GitHub page that explains all the ROM folder names and which games there are. So check the link below for that. I have already downloaded thumbnails for all these ROM folders and they go into the IMGS folder. You can use an application called Scraper to scrape thumbnails for your ROM library. Then simply plug it in and you're done. For future viewers to upgrade, just download the upgrade package, drag it to your root folder of your SD card for your Mio Mini. I'm not sure if it's gonna be a zipped folder if you need to unzip it, but drag that file into the root folder of your SD card like over here. Then eject the card, place it back into your Mio Mini, follow the prompts and wait for it to do its thing. You should see an upgrade progress screen and then you're done. So a walkthrough of Kariki's features. The first thing I wanna do is just jump right into the themes. Press the start button to get to the menu, then scroll to themes and then scroll left and right to select your theme. Whoever worked on these themes is doing an excellent job. There's my favorite theme for my RG350 devices and the RG280 V Beta Max. And there are a few more, but I want to focus on the new ATC range of themes made by ALBGR 1979, which are just fantastic. There's black, blue, elegant black and white. My favorite is elegant color. I love how the artwork has been blended into these pages and how it includes some info about the consoles, like the year of release and a bit of history about the console. I also like the menu button prompts to guide you through simple menu. There's GB, which I'm guessing is meant to be Game Boy, but it resembles more the North American SNES to me. Icons and logos is also a great one. And there's Retro Games, a really lovely theme that they've designed. Look how cool it looks with Sega Mega Drive and that backdrop. I really like this theme. Really well done, guys. And lastly, the SNES one, which is modeled on the international version of the old SNES, which looks pretty cool. A fairly interesting feature is the boot screen selector. Press B until you get to the sort of beginning of the, the menu system. Scroll up until you get to apps and games, then select apps, go into boot screen selector. Scroll right to choose your favorite boot screen. Press A, press A again, and then it's done. It still needs a little bit of work because even though when you restart it and boots up, it does show that boot screen technically, it still shows the default boot screen as well. Okay, so the function slash menu button functions. So you press this function button and it does various things with other buttons. So if you press function and start, it closes your game. If you press function up and down, it does the brightness of the screen. I did notice last night sitting in bed that um, in in a, in a dark room, it's still quite bright at, at, at its lowest, lowest brightness, so maybe they can adjust that. Then function and X opens the retro arch menu. 
function plus A pauses the game. Function plus B, fast forward, which is nice, is easy access to the fast forward feature. Function L2 and R2 chooses your save slot. As you press it, it goes up and down, counts up and down to whichever save slot you'd like to use. Function plus R1 saves your game and function plus L1 loads the save. I also like the hold power to shut off feature, very simple, but there's no getting around the fact that, you know, and you know S's shut down and restart back into a game where you left off definitely is, you know, a sort of superior feature, but this simple just shut down is really nice to have. The menu, I'm not going to go into a deep dive of the menu here because there's clearly still a lot of work to be done. You know, as you go through, there's unavailable bits and pieces because they're not relevant to the Miu Mini or they're not being used yet or whatever. But I want to just point out a few things. I recommend setting a screen timeout to save the battery because it is set to, as default to always on. They recommend switching off the audio fix. If you're having performance issues with a game and as a last resort, you can switch off the audio fix because the Mii Mini has a, an audio issue that needs a, a fix. The, the Onion OS also does this. I found a default screen setting to be quite nice. So you don't have to tweak that, but it, it's there if you want it. Okay, so now likes and dislikes. I don't, you know, this is a free software that these guys are making for us and it's for the love of gaming. So likes and dislikes feels a little bit disingenuous, but just to point out, the things that I really like is the fact that the function button doesn't have a long press. In Onion OS, I regularly accidentally exit a game because I'm trying to save or do something and I end up pressing it too long and I exit the game. That's impossible with this system. The shortcuts with the function plus pressing another key are quite easy to remember and are quite handy. I love the themes on Koriki. Um, Onion OS is maybe an 8 on themes and Koriki is a 9.5. It really, I mean, I love the Onion OS themes and Koriki just takes it to a whole nother level. Really lovely themes. And then dislikes. I don't like to put dislikes on these great pieces of software. But um, when you choose the boot screen, another logo still pops up when you're using that boot screen. It also pops up when you're opening a game and closing a game. It's a weird little glitch and I think they're probably going to fix that up soon. I don't like the fact that I have to remove systems that I'm not using. For instance, you know, computer-based games, it still creates a default menu system that I have to go into the back end and remove. So hopefully they can fix that in future updates. But I do think that might be a simple menu issue. And then you can't set a game to auto start in the favorites menu. So when you're in your normal menu, you can set up auto start, which allows you to boot up into that game when you next start the system. You can't set that up in the favorites menu. So if you're navigating your favorites and you say, oh, I want to auto start into this game the next time I open my device, you can't do that in the favorites menu. And then a quick little sort of comparison versus Onion OS. The biggest draw cards to Onion OS is its, its ability to boot straight back into a game that you left off. You simply press the power button to power the device off and then when you power it back up it boots straight back into the game which is a really really great great feature and it's one of the main features that people love Onion OS for. With Simple Menu you can set an auto start feature where you press select um, when you're on the game and it's, it turns auto start on. This will force Simple Menu to shut down the device when you exit a game and then when you switch it on again it will open up in that same game. However, it won't up and open up where you left off and you will need to remember to save before you close your device or you will lose where you were in the game. So do we need another OS? <laughs> I'm not sure, but you know, the, like I said, these guys do this for the love of gaming, for the love of the community. It's just nice to see another custom firmware being added. And, and it's interesting to see what the R Paradise team are going to have in mind with this for the future. Simple Menu is definitely a nice little front end to use. I appreciate the straightforwardness of the system, especially with the way the function button works. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you started to use it? Are you going to use it? See you in the next one.